Hi, I'm Jerry Steele, Systems Engineer with Texas Instruments, and we're going to talk about current sensing with three subtopics, low side sensing, high side sensing, and zero drift. And in this discussion, we're talking about shunt-based current sensing with single supply amplifiers. When you're doing current sensing, the first option you should always evaluate will be the use of low side current sensing. There's two possible scenarios on a power supply or on a load. In low side sensing, the task is simplified by the low common mode, which is always pretty close to zero. When you have a shunt in series with a load, you will always be developing a positive voltage output, which is easily amplified with a straightforward, non-inverting, op-amp based circuit. By contrast, a shunt in series with a battery or a power supply is going to develop a negative going voltage and requires an inverting op-amp circuit in order to develop the necessary positive going output. Now in either of these examples, keep in mind that the common mode is always close to zero and the op-amp that you pick for this requirement must have a common mode range that includes its negative rail or ground to be able to perform this. Now a frequent problem that you encounter in current sensing has to do with the fact that we're sensing a small voltage drop across that shunt resistor. And it doesn't take much parasitic resistance in wiring or printed circuit board traces to induce an error into that shunt voltage. You can solve that simply by using differential sensing, often called Kelvin sensing, into a difference input amplifier. And in fact, this is the first opportunity to recommend the use of current sense amplifiers because they provide that difference input. Now in this case, you might want to pick an amplifier like a TI INA 210. And the reason you pick that amplifier is it has a common mode range of from minus 0.6 to 26 volts, so that its common mode range includes zero. Now a second advantage of using a current sense amplifier for low side sensing is that all the gain setting components are built into this amplifier so you don't have to go selecting precision components as you would with your own op amp circuit. Now a common problem with low side sensing is that we've disturbed the ground on these components and very often uh, that's a situation that can't be tolerated. So we have to go to high side sensing. There are other reasons for doing high side sensing. Take for instance a system with a remotely located load where it's desirable desirable to be able to ground that load directly to the frame of the system. And that allows us to only have to run one wire out to this load. In high side sensing, we use an amplifier connected to a high side shunt. And in the past, this would have been done using an op amp with four resistors in a difference amplifier circuit. And that was very difficult to do because the high voltages here require very good common mode rejection. And to get that common mode rejection, those resistors would have to be matched very precisely. Dedicated current sense amplifiers provide this function with a very high common mode rejection built into them and the ability to operate on a low single supply, say 3.3 volts. And the thing that these amplifiers can do, even though they're operating on that low single supply, is if we look at a part like the TI INA193, its inputs can connect to a shunt that can be connected to common mode voltages that range from minus 16 to plus 80 volts. Now that common mode range is one of the first specifications you'll need to look at when choosing an amplifier for this application. On the upper end, you need to be able to withstand this supply voltage and any transients that you ant anticipate occurring. On the low side, it's a little more complicated, and let's use a TI INA168 as an example here. The INA168 is useful because it has resistor programmable gain, but this part has a common mode range that goes from plus 2.7 volts to plus 60 volts. And in a lot of systems, the fact that that common mode will not go to zero is not a problem. But if you have a system where you anticipate a short circuit occurring on the power supply line and you want to be able to measure current during that event, consider that that corresponds to a common mode voltage of zero. So the common mode range of the amplifier chosen must extend to or below zero volts. 
Now let's discuss the importance of zero drift in current sensing. And zero drift applies to any amplifier that has either chopper or auto zero techniques in it in order to reduce offset. And in current sensing, we always have the problem of the full scale drop on the shunt and the losses associated with that. And that full scale drop is a function of accuracy requirements and offset. And to illustrate that, let's take an amplifier that has one millivolt of offset. And let's say that we want to achieve 1% accuracy. What this indicates is that we will have to have a 100 millivolt full scale drop on the shunt so that the offset errors become less than 1% of the total error. Now let's contrast that with the choice of an amplifier like an INA 210, which has 35 microvolts of offset. Now while that's more than an order of magnitude reduction in offset, let's target reducing the shunt down to 10 millivolts, which is a single order of magnitude. But even then, that's a considerable reduction in both loss, heat, and, and everything else in the shunt, allowing us to use a smaller shunt, possibly a lower cost shunt. And with the offset being reduced even more than an order of magnitude, we have still ended up with an application much more accurate than the one orig originally targeted. And don't rule out the power of zero drift, even if you're doing your own op amp based low side circuits. It's very easy to incorporate zero drift there by choosing an op amp such as a TI OPA333 with its zero drift capabilities. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jerry Steele. If you want more information, please see Current Sensing on TI's website.